For Paul Smith, when he was a cheeky teenager on Hey Dad, Paul Smith was a rising star of Australian TV. Then came a spectacular fall from grace. Now 46, Smith has served a stint in prison for fraud and embezzlement. He even moved states to make a fresh start. But it seems old habits die hard. He'd be the lowest of the low. And um, if, if you could do this to a special needs child, then I don't think he would stop it at anyone. Well, you always said this was a democratic household. And it is, but... With the benefit of hindsight, you can see how all the way along he was spinning you a line. <laughs> you can't blame me for trying. So, Damien, this is all that's left of your dream backyard. It's just a big hole in the ground, really. That's right, Mia, an expensive hole at that. Um, I refer to it as uh, Paul's legacy. Victim after victim. These are just some of the people who've been ripped off by former TV star Paul Smith. Best known for playing the role of Simon Kelly on the now tainted Aussie sitcom Hey Dad. I treat him rough, I say. Bring him in, I'll show him a few tips. But the stardom didn't last long. A self-confessed gambling addict, Paul Smith's life spiralled out of control in the 80s. 18 charges of fraud, theft, embezzlement, totalling $57,000. What do you think you turned over in those uh, those years? Oh, I, I turned over probably 1.5 million. So I turned over, not, not what I lost. Smith appeared on the midday show with Ray Martin in 1991. It was a week before he was due to start an 18-month weekend detention sentence. And it was in jail where he learned how to become a businessman. I decided I'm going to use that to my advantage. I'm six months into a course at the moment, small business management, which I'm doing well in. I'm going to use the weekends to study that, and then I will have got something out of gambling. In 1994, Paul Smith spent another three months in a Tasmanian jail for similar offences. Sometime in 2005, he moved to Western Australia and became a greyhound trainer. But that too exposed his dodgy dealings, and he was disqualified for lying at an inquiry. In the meantime, Paul Smith was embarking on another business venture. There's a lot of people that want to have a smaller pool. Yeah. Yeah. Paul Smith started a company called Express Pool Supplies, operating from Perth's northern suburbs. He was insisting on being the one-stop shop, which worked really well for me. Jill Atkins says Smith quoted her to build a dream backyard oasis in October last year. Part of it was that they would take away all this, all this junk, clear it away, clear that uh, wall there. Jill says he was a great salesman who kept asking for large deposits to begin work. She eventually handed over $9,000, but the job never started. I'd ascertained that he hadn't paid any of the suppliers any money. I rang him directly and I rang the council and found there was no application in and he, Paul, hadn't paid him his deposit for materials. Damien had a similar encounter, conned by a man who seemingly did everything by the books, providing mountains of plans, architects and detailed quotes. Did you ever imagine that everything he'd promised you would never come to fruition? At this stage, no. This is the eyesore Damien was left with in November last year. Paul's empty promises cost almost $25,000. He said, look, I'll arrive in two weeks' time. That never happened and then it was two weeks and then it was four weeks and then there was an excuse and they were waiting for this and the Shire hadn't done that. Alarm bells rang when Paul stopped answering Damien's calls, five months after he dug a big hole. And I had a few other people start to phone me uh, who had also been affected, other clients of his or other people associated with him. Um, and then I started to investigate the Shire's records and find out things aren't happening. <laughs> <laughs> but perhaps the most sickening of Paul Smith's cons is what he did to Jason and his disabled son Noah. Just by him being in the pool and swimming around is, is the therapy that he needs. It helps straighten him up and, uh, yeah, and he loves it, so it's probably the most enjoyment he has. Nine-year-old Noah has a rare neurometabolic disorder called Lee's disease. He spends hours having hydrotherapy, which helps him regain some of his mobility. He doesn't have the ability to um, regulate his temperature, so we need to keep it quite warm, otherwise he just can't bear to be in the pool. Through a charity grant from a rehabilitation group, Therapy Focus, Noah was going to be gifted solar panels. It would extend his hydrotherapy for up to three months a year. 
and Paul Smith, who took the charity's money and said he'd install it. We thought everything was going well and, um, and we made the phone call to Paul Smith to book in a day. Um, the, the day was booked and uh, nobody turned up, so we started making phone calls and there was to no answer. We've spoken to several of Paul Smith's former workmates, subcontractors and victims. He's left a trail of debt and destruction in Western Australia and his accountants told us he thinks Paul skipped town and may have gone to Queensland. He could also still be operating under several business names, including DIY Pools and Express Pool Supplies. He's not answering many calls, but he did pick up after we tried several times. What about those people that haven't heard from you for five, six months? Where have you been? Well, I don't know what you're referring to over five or six months, because that's not correct. Damien this morning, we spoke to him. The last time you dealt with him was just after Christmas. You dug a hole in his backyard six months ago, and it's still there, Paul. Uh, that's not true. Why did you feel the need that you had to move states, though, Paul? Mate, I'm not going to answer the question. I just said to you, I'm going to take legal advice. Call back. Paul, I'll eagerly await your phone call, but I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't call us back either. Well, well Mia, look, I'm, we don't have to worry about what you think or what you don't think. Well, I said to you, I'll call you in an hour or two and I will, OK? No phone call, but a day later, we received this text promising that a legal document outlining his version of events would be sent by the weekend. An email that never arrived. So long as they recognise Paul by his face and his name, I, I just uh, would not give him the time of day. Really don't listen to him because he'll try and convince you otherwise. He really is the consummate con man, I think, and um, so uh, you just you don't realise what's going on. He's obviously getting away with it for such a long time, he thinks it's easy, so he's going to keep doing it, I guess, until he's physically stopped. Since we contacted Paul Smith, he has paid back the charity therapy focus for the solar panels that were not installed. He also sent us a statement blaming a fallout with another business for his unfinished work.